Hello, I'm Dr. Pat Resneau, a vascular surgeon at the All Hospital and Associate Professor of Surgery at the McGill Gatineau Campus in Canada. Today, I'm going to illustrate how to detect peripheral arterial disease, also known as PAD, in the office setting. To achieve this, we will be using the ankle brachial index, which is simply a measure of the ankle systolic pressure divided by the systolic pressure of the brachial artery. For the ankle brachial index, we need a handheld Doppler, some ultrasonic gel, and a blood pressure cuff. Mrs. Bosha is a typical vascular patient with an history of smoking, heart disease, and claudication. Using the Edinburgh questionnaire, Mrs. Bosha answered yes for pain onset in the calf when walking the same distance, yes for pain relief when she stops walking, and there is no pain when she stands. Before we begin the test, Mrs. Beauchamp needs to relax in a quiet room for about 10 minutes to stabilize her blood pressure. There are three steps to obtain an ankle brachial index. The first step is to take the measurement of a systolic pressure at the arm. The blood pressure cuff must be placed around the arm and the fingers are on the brachial artery. We have to put some ultrasound gel right here in the anticubital fossa over the brachial artery. Now we can listen for the signal with the handheld Doppler. We are hearing a normal triphasic pulse. When we inflate the blood pressure cuff, we no longer hear a signal. We are going to gradually release the pressure until we hear the signal again. This is Mrs. Beauchamp's systolic blood pressure, which is 130 millimeters of mercury. So that becomes our denominator for the ankle brachial index. We also have to measure the pressure of the left arm. The second step is the measurement of the systolic pressure at the ankle. There are two vessels in the foot. One is the dorsalis pedis artery, which is just lateral to the extensor of the first toe, and the posterior tibial artery is right behind the medial malleolus. The blood pressure cuff has to be placed right above the malleolus. We have to put the gel right behind the medial malleolus and over the dorsum of the foot. Now, we can hear the triphasic signal on both arteries. We have to blow the cuff up and release it slowly, first on the posterior tibial artery and then the pedial artery. In this case, the systolic pressure is also 130 millimeters of mercury on both arteries. We then have to measure the pressure on the left leg. Using the same technique, we obtain a systolic pressure of 90 millimeters of mercury on the left leg. The final step is to calculate the ratio of the ankle pressure divided by the brachial pressure. To obtain the ankle brachial index, we take the highest of the brachial pressures that we have measured and that becomes our denominator. The numerator is the highest ankle pressure in the right leg and the highest ankle pressure that we have measured in the left leg to give us the right and the left ABIs respectively. We calculate the ankle brachial index for each leg. With the data obtained for Mrs. Beauchamp, this patient's highest right ankle pressure was 130, which is divided by the highest blood pressures of the arms, which is also 130. Her ankle brachial index is therefore 1.0. On the left side, the ankle brachial index is 0.7, simply because the numerator is 90 measure on the left ankle instead of 130. An ankle brachial index of 0.9 to 1.4 is within the normal limit. A value of 0.8 to 0.9 suggests some arterial disease and treatment of risk factors is advisable. A value of 0.5 to 0.8 suggests moderate arterial disease, whereas a value of less than 0.5 suggests severe arterial disease. Finally, a value greater than 1.4 is an indication of calcification of the arteries. Why is it so important to diagnose PAD? Because those patients suffering from PAD could benefit from life and limb saving medical therapies like ACE inhibitors, statins, antiplatelet agents, and anticoagulants such as rivaroxaban at a vascular dosage. There are about 150,000 people in the province of Quebec with PAD. You can diagnose this disease in your office 
using a simple NL Doppler and a blood pressure cuff to calculate your patient's ABI. Anyone over the age of 60 or anyone over the age of 50 with risk factors such as diabetes, smoking history or heart disease should have this test done to determine if they have PAD. To know more about this condition, visit ssvq.org. Thank you for watching.